Hi everyone, Gina Kay here, and today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you three different ways to do the wood graining technique to create the look of wood planks, wood strips, and wood parquet. Here are three card projects I made using the My Anchor stamp set and the My Anchor mini kit. In this particular sample, I did the wood parquet technique. This one's a real fun one, and you get to cut up the pieces and change their position. The second card, I used a technique that creates the look of ocean weathered wood, little strips of ocean weathered wood. I really like this one. And then this final one uses a large wood plank technique. And all of these are really fun to do and really easy to do with minimal supplies. The first technique I want to show you looks like large wood planks like you can see in this card. And what I've done is I've cut a piece of cardstock three and three quarter inches by five inches. And I'm going to use my score buddy to score three quarter inch lines, starting at the three inch line. I always like to double score to make sure that they're deep enough. The next line is at two and a quarter inches. Then I'm going to go down to one and a half inches. And my final score line, I'm going to turn the cardstock around and score it again at three inches. Then I'm going to turn it on its side and I'm going to add some random score lines on each of those strips of white. They're going to be my wood planks and I am actually going to segment them off. And you can see I'm just picking random spots to do that. It's easy on the top one and on the bottom one, but on the middle ones, it's a little bit more difficult. You just kind of have to eyeball it and just shake your tool in there to feel the groove. If you don't feel the groove, you can just go to the right or the left a little bit until you find a groove to sink your tool down into. And again, I like to do at least two on each one. The top one has three different segments. Well, most of them have three different segments. And that'll give you the best look. But keeping it random really gives you a nice look. Now this last one is easy to find because I can just see where those score lines are from the bottom and just work my way up. And it's a lot easier to eyeball that way as well. So once that's done, you can see what that looks like. It also kind of looks like cinder block or bricks. And if you want to do the look of cinder blocks or bricks, you can just space them out a little more evenly. I'm just going back and kind of reinforcing those initial lines. So now I'm going to do the wood graining. And I'm going to start with my warm cocoa ink cube. And I'm just going to streak that ink cube down my cardstock. And that really accentuates the different lines that I've scored into my cardstock. And you can see I'm not worried about getting it solid color. I want a lot of white left behind. Now, using some of the dark sage ink, I'm going to go on top of all of that. And you can really see how that just kind of softens the red out of that warm cocoa ink. And if you find that you're looking at it and you still think it needs a little bit more, you can go ahead and add another color. Or you can go back and add a little bit more of the warm cocoa just to fill in some of those areas. And that will really help make it look more distressed and a little bit warmer. And you can see, even where I drop the ink cube, that just adds to the charm of that distressed looking wood. The second technique is ocean weathered wood planks. And you can see in this card, it looks a lot lighter and softer. And I love that little bit of blue in there. So again, I'm starting with a three and three quarter inch by five inch panel, and I am going to score half inch score lines at four and a half inches, four inches, three and a half inches, three inches, and I'm going to keep going down by the half inch, two and a half inches, and then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to work my way back up again. And I just find that it's easier to not have to go too close to the left side of my score buddy. By flipping it around and just keeping everything more toward the right, it's easier for me to get even strokes. So now I'm going to grab my warm cocoa ink cube and I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the last one. I'm going to do nice, even streaks, but very light. I'm not going to press very hard at all. I'm not going to worry if there's a lot of white showing. 
kind of want that in there for this technique. And I'm going to finish that up just like that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of blue. The In the Navy ink cube comes in the My Anchor kit. And you can do this with other colors too. But for In the Navy, if you're going to use it, rub a lot of that blue off first. And then in a circular motion, just add a little bit of the blue over each of the planks. Now you can do this with powder blue, you can do this with ocean mist or turquoise sea, depending on the look that you're going for. But you really want to use a lighter blue. Now I like doing this technique where you rub off some of that in the navy because I stamped my focal images for this card in the in the navy ink and they're perfect complementary colors because the undertone is the same. And you can see I'm just kind of rubbing across there and making sure I fill in some of that white. So that gives me a very distressed beachy look because of all the blues in there. The final technique is the wood parquet technique. And again, I'm starting with the same size piece of cardstock, but I'm going to score very small planks of wood here. I'm going to start at the three and a half inch mark because I'm going to score just quarter inch lines going all the way down. So every one quarter of an inch I'm going to add a score line. And when I get near the end here again I like to turn it over it just makes it easier my hand and my fingers don't get in the way and I can finish that off and make the lines nice and straight and very even. So there are my quarter inch score lines and again I'm going to use some of the warm cocoa ink and this one I can go a little more heavy handed if I want to because this is just going to be a brown wood and I really like how it kind of is darker near the top and then it fades out. Now I'm going to add another brown and this is the charcoal brown that comes in the My Anchor kit. And this is really going to add some nice deep dark, almost a walnut look about it. And this kind of reminds me of some of the old fashioned wood parquet floor colors. Now to do the wood parquet technique you're going to need to cut this piece down. So I'm going to grab my Fiskars cutter, my little portable one, and first I'm going to cut the piece in half. So I'm going to cut it at the two and a half inch mark and then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut, going to cut two pieces at one and three quarter inches. And then I'm going to cut it at two and a quarter inches going that way. So for this one I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut this one at one and well one and three quarter inches. We'll start there and then I'm going to turn it and cut it at two and a quarter inches. And what's nice about these quarter inch marks is since you've scored all of these at quarter inch marks it makes it very easy to figure out if you're on the right spot because you're going to be on a white line. So for this one I'm going to cut squares and I'm going to start at one and three quarter inches. I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to turn it and do it again at one and three quarter inches. All of the measurements for these pieces will be below the screen at YouTube and on Stamp TV. So you don't have to remember all of these or write them down as we go along because they're all written out for you below the screen. All right, so there are my four pieces. And now I'm going to assemble these onto a piece of three and three quarter inch by five inch white cardstock. And you get that parquet look by turning the orientation of those panels so that they're not going in the same direction and that gives you that cool kind of almost wood quilted look that parquet floors are so uh, well known for. And then I'm going to tape these on. I like to lay it out first before I tape it to make sure I've got all the pieces cut properly and that they're going to fit onto that background. And once they're all taped and all positioned you'll have that cool pattern look and it's a perfect backdrop for a masculine card project. Now what I've done at the bottom here I want to finish that off and what I've done in my card sample is I've taken one of the pattern paper pieces from the My Anchor mini pattern paper pack and I cut a strip and then I just put that right across the bottom there and that left room at the bottom for my greeting so I could stamp that on white. Now I want to show you how I 
add these brads, how I get the proper spacing for the holes for the brads. So I'm going to start by stamping this image using a little bit of the Dark Sage ink. And I'm using my Mini Misty for this, so I know my focal image and my greeting are going to be exactly where I want them. And I'm just inking this up using that Dark Sage ink, and then I'm going to stamp that and get a nice crisp impression. And if you're using the Mini Misty, if you don't get the impression right the first time, you can go back and do it again. It's what I love about my Misty tools. Okay, now some of you aren't going to like this, what I'm going to do here, but what I'm going to do is grab a piece of plastic canvas. This is a triangle one, but they come in circles and squares and all kinds of shapes, and I'm just going to line that up where I want to poke my holes. And I'm going to use the cushion of the Misty as my pad underneath. And I have a Tim Holtz craft pick here, and I'm going to pick three spots on this plastic canvas in a row, and I'm going to poke my holes. And once I get those holes exactly where I want them, then I'm going to go back in and make them just a little bit bigger by wiggling the tool inside each one of those holes. And I know you might not like that, but I use my Misty Cushion all the time for paper piercing, and it works great, and it doesn't affect the stamping at all. So here are my three finished card projects that I created using the My Anchor Mini Kit supplies and a few embellishments from my drawers at home. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and stay tuned to Stamp TV for more and thanks for watching.